Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday morning to you. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. I just, I really, really appreciate you being with me. I hope you're benefiting uh, from these videos, and I'm hearing, hearing from an increasing, I mean, a really increasing number of you who are expressing your appreciation uh, for what I'm trying to share with you. We're looking at, we obviously still studying the Olivet Discourse. Now look, let me put it like this. If it can be shown that Jesus' parable of Matthew 25, 1 to 13, concerning the coming of the bridegroom for his bride, if that took place at the time of the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70, that means that the Olivet Discourse is not divided into two subjects. Number one, the Lord's coming in A.D. 70, and number two, the end of time. It means that the attempt to divide Matthew 24 at verse 36, at that so-called continental divide of the Olivet Discourse, in which Jesus said, but of that day and hour knows no man, that is a failed claim. It's a false claim. So what I've been sharing with you is just a little bit, all right? I mean, just a little bit. And don't forget, almost the last day for our three-item special for the month of September, uh, we shall meet him in the air, the wedding of the King of Kings, Hosea, 30 lessons, Paul, the source of Paul's doctrine of the resurrection and the remarriage, by the way, as well as have heaven and earth passed away. Normal price. If you purchase these separately, independently, it would cost you $56, almost $57. For the month of September 2020, U.S. orders only, total delivered price, $35. So go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, and there's a banner right up at the top that will help you in ordering that. Please take advantage of that before the, before the time is up. Now, Monday and yesterday, I shared with you the connection between Revelation chapter 17 and 18 and Ezekiel chapter 16 and 23. Now, I'm, got, I'm not going to go into chapter 23, uh, and that's not because I'm sque squeamish, by the way, uh, but for t time consideration. But I do want to share something with you about the connections that demonstrate and that go ahead and, and confirm the fact that Babylon of Revelation was Old Covenant Judah. All right? And if Babylon of Revelation was Old Covenant Judah since the time of her death, the time of her destruction is also the time of the marriage, the remarriage of guess what? All 12 tribes because the New Jerusalem is built upon what? Twelve foundation of the apostles. You have the twelve gates for the apostles. This is the restoration of Israel. But the restoration of Israel would lead to the calling of all nations. Not just Israel. The salvation for the nations is built upon the restoration of all twelve tribes. The salvation for the nations is built upon the salvation for Israel. That's the biblical narrative. Now, very quickly, I'm already running out of time here. Hey, you know, this is quick. Okay, I want you to notice, as I called your attention to yesterday, the Lord called Judah. Now, this is in Ezekiel's day. Let's make no mistake. This is in Ezekiel's day. He is describing Judah and Jerusalem in his day their sin that was about to lead to their national destruction and being carried off into Babylonian captivity. Well, guess what? In Revelation, we find these same terms, same motifs, same themes being applied to this spiritual city called Babylon, and as we'll see more than that, only in Revelation it cannot... <coughs> pardon me, cannot be literal physical Babylon in Iraq. It is, in fact, a spiritual designation of a different city that due to her sin, due to her adulterous ways, 
is being identified as Babylon. Let me read to you again from Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 32. You are an adulterous wife who takes strangers instead of her husbands. Men make payment to all harlots, but you have made your payments to the nations. I, I mean, this is almost unheard of, right? I mean, it's just unthinkable. A woman so immoral. But remember, this is not just a, this is not a woman who's simply chosen a life of immorality. This is an adulterous wife. And thus I suggest to you, when this exact same precise language is being used of Babylon in Revelation, of that city spiritually designated as Babylon, it lets us know who Babylon was. And it wasn't Rome. It wasn't the United States. It wasn't the Roman Catholic Church. It was Old Covenant, Judah, and Jerusalem, as we shall see. Now, don't forget, here God calls, in Ezekiel 16, God calls Jerusalem the adulterous wife. Remember, Jesus three times in his ministry referred to that generation as a wicked and adulterous generation. Now look, folks, uh, don't fail to catch the power of this. He could not be speaking of the ten northern tribes. He could not be speaking of Rome. He could not be speaking of anyone else other than Old Covenant Judah because only Old Covenant Judah was still in a covenant relationship. And thus, as the Old Covenant wife, she was, just like in Ezekiel 16, an adulterous wife. What were, what were her sins? Well, the sins are she committed fornication with all the nations of the earth. Now, due to time, let's skip down verse 44. Indeed, everyone who quotes Proverbs will use this proverb against you, like mother, like daughter. You are your mother's daughter, loathing husband and children. And you are the sister of your sisters who loathe their husbands and children. Your mother was a Hittite and your father was an Amorite. Boy, you talk about some powerful, powerful language here. This is incredible. Your elder sister is Samaria, who dwells with her daughters to the north of you, and your younger sister, who dwells to the south of you, watch, is Sodom and her daughters. You did not walk in their ways, nor act according to their abominations, but as if that were too little, you became more corrupt than they in all of their ways and in your ways. As I live, says the Lord God, neither your sister Sodom nor her daughters have done as you and your daughters have done. Look, this is the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and your daughter had pride fullness of food, abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy, and they were haughty, and they committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. Oh, by the way, Sodom was never in a covenant relationship with God, but she was most assuredly guilty of sin. And so God judged her. Samaria, verse 51, did not commit half of your sins, but you have multiplied your abominations more than they and have justified your sisters by all of the abominations which you have done. Now watch. Judah filled up the measure of her sin and was destroyed in 586 B.C. Do you remember in Matthew chapter 12, which Jesus told the parable? And he tells us, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. 
Then he says, I will return to my home, a house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Then he goes, and he takes seven spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in, and they dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it be to this wicked generation. What was Jesus saying? Jesus was saying, just like Judah filled up the measure of her sin in 586 B.C. because she was an adulterous wife and committed fornication with the nations of the earth, Jesus was saying, and by the way, here in Matthew 12, he's already identified her as an adulterous wife. And he was saying, just like Judah filled up the measure of her sin in 586 and was destroyed in national destruction, in his day and in his time, in his generation, Israel would become worse than ever. And final thought here, notice that in Ezekiel 16, God identifies Judah as the sister of Sodom. She's just like Sodom. Oh, and in chapter 23, he just goes ahead and calls her Sodom. Oh, and in Isaiah chapter 1, written well before Ezekiel, God spoke to the leaders of Jerusalem and says, Hear this, O you leaders of Sodom. And so God in Isaiah, God in Ezekiel 16, God in Ezekiel 23, spiritually designated Old Covenant Jerusalem, Judah, number one, as the adulterous wife, guilty of fornication, and identified her spiritually as Sodom. Well, let's see. In Revelation chapter 11, that great city, which is Babylon, was spiritually called Sodom. Did you realize that no other city in all of the Bible is ever spiritually designated as Sodom other than Old Covenant, Jerusalem. Now, when we tie all of these pieces together of the designation of Judah and Jerusalem as an adulterous wife in Ezekiel, Jesus' designation of Judah as an adulterous bride, wife, in Matthew 12 and Matthew 16, with Revelation identifying and using the language of Sodom, the language of harlotry, the language of covenant. I'm telling you, folks, the parallels are too strong to be ignored. I'm out of time. We'll pick this up as we, as we look at the impending destruction, the impending divorce and death of Babylon the harlot, adulterous wife at the coming of the Lord. When the Lord would remarry the new, the new Israel. Don't want to miss it. I'll see you on the flip side.